when I say that creativity is an addiction, it's it's not a negative. It's clearing the heart to understand that there could be something that is indifferent within. And understanding what that indifference is helps you take creativity and plant it in a forest where, where you're going to have fruit, where you're going to have a harvest. But if you ignore your creativity, you know what it does to you. H- how late were you up last night? Maybe over the weekend? You know what it's going to do to you. Unplug because we will always say yes to creativity, totally uncut because we all make mistakes. So turn it into a tool. This is Arrow Unplugged. I think one of the hardest things about being a podcaster is I, I don't know where you are. Are you in a city, a state, a country? Are you on Mars? I mean, may, you know, because remember with podcasting, it doesn't go away. And that you could be listening to things that people on Earth did at one time. And the year is 2175. You, you don't know. But spring is popping in the Carolinas. The spiritual flow of change is in the atmosphere that we're breathing in, in this present moment of now. Walking towards summer is completely different from the transition between fall and winter. And as dangerous as the, the spring storms are here in Carolina, March moving forward is so much more accepted than facing winter's bite because it chills the soul at depths that have to lead to self-diagnosed methods of felt depression, <laughs> which is why I write. And I'll bet you a million dollars that I write more in my journals between October and March than any other time. I mean, you can dig through every, every one of these books and, and I'll bet you that the subjects between October and March... They're a lot heavier than those when the sun is shining bright and it's springtime and summertime anywhere in the world. Because the creative mind, it wants to speak. And during those darker days, it goes totally hardcore mental. I've got nearly 28 years of daily writing. And for what reason other than to find peace and not peace is? Being a stream thinker, I put value in what's moving in the right now because I believe in the presence of what it's carrying with it not yesterday's news. And so, the next season is set to be seen, heard, felt, and more importantly, listened to. Hmm. Hmm. Listening to the seasons. Hmm. Hey, it's Arrow. This is The Daily Mess, a chronological walk through an everyday world. I am a daily writer. Listening to the seasons is a thought that you could probably do five or six pages on. You could, you could post it in your blogs. You could talk about it on your podcast. Listening to the season. This is The Daily Mess. You know what? There is some good news today, and I'm, I'm choosing to believe it. The good news is that the national COVID-19 numbers are at their lowest since July of 2021, and today's date happens to be March 7th, 2022. The pessimist in me, though, is still very much aware of how New variants are always on the edge of becoming the next headline maker, which I can compare to airplanes in the sky. Let me work this out with you. Since September 11th, 2001, every time I see any airplane in the sky, I am still shell shocked to believe that it's flying too low and it's got to be heading toward a building. That's how watching those videos for nearly 21 years still injures my soul. So I'm going to leave a little note here for a future reader. Dear future reader, this page doesn't properly represent the COVID-19 journey. I really do invite you to go back into all of the writing while teaming it up with the podcast. Both have served as my places of mental recovery. And even that feels like it barely scratches what's really, really deep. I'm still wearing a mask in a non-mandate world. I'll gain the confidence while always wondering if it's going to fire back again. We have four COVID-19 tests inside this house. The government gave it to us. It was free. I truly see this as the true face of our brand new normal. What does this have to do with you, right? It has everything to do with you. Because I invite you to take the journey with me. The journey of leaving your breadcrumbs for the future generations who are going to ask, so what did you guys do again? Because we're already facing that with, with September 11th. Because the generations that are buying right now and that so many businesses are relying on, they now have the power to make decisions in local governments as well, millennials and beyond. So what's happened is here is that we cannot forget about these moments and the true 
experience. Now, it would be very difficult for you to sit down and write about September 11th or an event that's going on that took place maybe 15, 20 years ago in your life because somehow, some way, the mind wants to bend the story and it wasn't the true emotion of, of what you were doing. But I do invite you to start writing about where we are in global history right now with the invasion of Ukraine. To, to, to put your true emotions on paper because someday somebody's going to pick that book up and they're going to go, oh my God, I didn't know that was the way of the world. Like, for instance, I'm going to tell you something that's very positive, very positive. In our neighborhood, the neighbors are hanging up Ukraine flags. It's unity. Unity for another country. It's saying, hey, look, we are very much aware of the world, but we're not at each other. We're going to work together. We're going to equally love and equally find peace. The other night at at Bank of America Stadium, it was our very first uh, professional soccer game. Well, the microphone went out while they were singing the national anthem. You got to go see the post. Then 74,000 people in one place, no matter what country you were from, sang the national anthem while the microphone was out. You don't think that there's unity? No, I think the media doesn't want to showcase that there's unity. So I want you to take a writing instrument and just jot down notes. Because one day, your grandchildren's grandchildren are going to go, what? Pandemic? No, something like that won't happen. No way. Ah, that stuff is for fairy tale books. What were they, what were they drinking? Harry Potter juice? Come on. I'm Errol, and that's The Daily Mess.